Welcome back to another episode of the Drift Car Build-Off presented by Spec Clutch and Coil Rad. Today the S54 engine refresh continues and we'll install this magical little piece of plastic. We last left off rebuilding the complete Vano system and with that complete, it is now on to another wear and potential catastrophic item on this motor and that is the uh, chain guide. This, the factory one, um, can deteriorate and break down after prolonged use and what happens is, worst case scenario, it drops down into your oil pan or I, I should say best case scenario, it drops down into your oil pan, doesn't, nothing happens. Worst case scenario, it gets caught up in the timing and things go kaboom, which is really bad. Thankfully, Bison has come out with his revised version, one that lasts forever. I think it's made of obviously a better plastic material, so we are gonna do that. Also, another thing that we're gonna touch on is when we take these cam hubs off, the sprockets themselves have bolts that back themselves out, and these are the revised ones from BMW, so we're gonna install those, all in the name of making sure that this motor is reliable and up to par for abuse. Uh, I, I know this is starting to look like it's starting to get expensive and it is, but we're just trying to make sure we take care of a lot of the wear items that haven't been touched on a motor like this that's so high mileage. We're once again following along with the BSAN systems instructions and we're at a point now where we've loosened all the bolts. I have to take the splined center shaft out and now, carefully remove these bolts. I've already loosened them up. Now this comes off. There we are. And let me pull this. It's full of fluid here. So this is also a item that you can replace with an updated part from an S62. And it helps with the rattle so the the common s54 rattle we won't be doing this because we didn't have a rattle and um, again it just raises the price of trying to fix all this so we're just trying to stick to the items that we know are at fault so let's see if any of these bolts are loose no that one's tight oh, that one's tight you can hear i'm just slowly getting to the right to the point where it's about to crack loose. So I think we're okay. We're going to replace these anyways, but we don't have any issues with these bolts, which is nice. So if you do have one of these where it's loose, then you definitely want to replace all of these. Now what we're going to do is pull one out at a time and replace it. I've brake cleaned and washed out the bolt hole. So now the next step is to apply some medium strength Loctite on there and in the hole it goes. We are going to apply 12 newton meters of torque here. 11.7, close enough. Bam, okay. So now we've got to repeat this six more times and then we're gonna move on to removing the other sprockets. I learned an interesting thing there, DP, and that is this sprocket actually comes apart off of the center where the bolts are, hence why I replaced both sides. After a little bit more reading on the BSAN site, we figured that out. So now we're gonna address our uh, valve chain guide, and you're gonna start off by removing the tensioner on this side with a large 32 mil socket. Ooh. There it is. Fancy. Hydraulic tensioner, I assume oil is pumped into there, which causes this to push out and keeps chain tension. Now we are going to remove the exhaust sprocket. Oh, okay. It's always nerve wracking dealing with this. Timing is never 
something you want to mess up. Ah, see, that's what I was worried about. Ooh, Both damn. are going to fall off there. That's not Ooh. good. Okay, we'll put this guy back on. We're okay, DP. We're still okay. Oh, damn. We are there okay. Are. So, I think yeah. we just let this rest down here. Yeah, you're supposed to take it off there completely and let it rest down. Just bind a bit. Now, we are going to actually remove the guide. Get my tool in here. Let's see if I can crack this loose. Oh, wow. Wasn't, wasn't that tight at all. I mean, this isn't going to fall down, but I'm going to hold on to it just in case. Oh, 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 we got a problem. Better. Houston, we have a problem. This is pushing against this pipe here. Oh. So, I probably... The pipe is... Yeah, I'm going to loosen the nut here so we don't have that issue. Okay. Let's see what our guide looks like here. Okay. So, it is obviously very dark from all the oil, which means it's older, but we don't see anything that's broken off here. I don't know, maybe it has at the end here? DP, what does that look like? Is that broken off there? You guys yeah, can maybe tell yeah, us. That is, that is definitely broken off on the end. Because uh, if you look at this piece, yeah. it is much longer. So That is 100% broken off there. We potentially have, oh, I can see a portion of it here. Oh, weird. Now, I don't want to drop this into the engine here. Pliers? I got it, DP. Oh my goodness. Drop it. Wow, it was broken. Look at that. that. There you go, folks. And <laughs> very good reason why you want to do this upgrade. And you can see how small and thin this is versus the B SAN unit, which is bulky. You're going to want to tighten this new tensioner down to 24 Newton meters. Bam. And now we can finally get on to the timing. Okay, so what I think I need to do here according to the B-SAN instructions is align this sprocket up so that it sits on the left and right side of the center of the cam here. And um, apparently this is not critical to the timing system in terms of how the chain goes on. But you can see like I'm off there, I need to be a little bit more. I gotta go one tooth over. Let's see here. See, I don't know. Probably I'm gonna try another tooth here. This is a bit of a guessing game since I've never done this before or watched somebody do it properly. It's kind of hit and miss. So, but I think that looks good to me, DP. What do you think? Pretty, yeah. I'm pretty centered there. Yeah. Think. Yeah, it looks think good to be, man. We're good. Yeah. And now we put the tensioner back in and tighten it back up. And I think we can say that, let's see, I don't know that, I don't, there wasn't a torque spec on this, so I'm just gonna go right about there. That feels good. Um, yeah, we've got chain tension back. So now I think it's back onto putting the rest of all this back together. The intimidation factor and confusion was really high before I started putting all of this back together, but after doing so, I now have a better idea of how the whole Vano system works and how to put it back together and how you can and can't screw it up. So uh, what you probably didn't see in the time lapse was when we cranked both of these hubs all the way clockwise, so it, I guess, advanced it all to the one side, then when you slide the Vanos unit on with the spline shafts, they click into place and then they slide in. And once they're in the proper place, and like they're the first tooth that you're in, you can't really mess it up. So it's actually pretty simple once you get the hang of it, and you've done this a couple of times, doing this once, I now get the whole point of it. So I'm, I'm pretty confident we have this timed correctly. Everything is ready to go. We had this really cool bridge, oops, sorry, that um, 
we needed to use for the alignment of the camshafts, which is critical. Uh, Ian from Bray Krause sent it to us. Thank you again, Ian, because apparently you want to use the BMW one. There are some other cheaper alternatives out there. Apparently they don't work as well. They're not as perfect in terms of alignment. So that helped us huge with that alignment because if this is off, you're gonna struggle with getting those keys in place. Timing has all been checked and double checked, so we're happy with that, which means it's time to move on to completing the, or reassembling the rest of the Vanos system, starting with the Vanos oil line. This is a factory line which is apparently quite prone to cracking over time, both from the very high PSI it sees and vibrations. It uh, sees 1200 PSI of oil pressure, so uh, guys who track their cars regularly actually recommend changing this out every year, which is kind of crazy. So Hack Engineering has come up with a solution for that with their own line, which as you can see has heat shielding on it down where it goes near underneath the headers. And this line is rated to over 7,000 PSI. So it should never crack. In fact, it comes with a lifetime warranty. So this is a one-time deal. Change it once and you're good to go forever, PT. So this looks so easy to install. I think I'm even gonna do this one myself. I'll let Pete do the hard work. I just stepped yeah, in. Yeah, all the timing. Shiny I've stuff. I've got gray to hairs do. coming after uh, was, worrying about all that, even though it wasn't difficult, but. It was a bit of a job. It was still a bit of a job. It was a bit of a job. Happy so, to have that past us. All right, after consulting the Hack Engineering blog, we can see how they want us to route the line just by starting by putting the banjo bolts in the top and bottom locations and then routing it with these P clips that they supply to these two factory bolt locations. And now it's just a matter of torquing the banjos down to. 13 newton meters or nine and a half pound feet for you pound feet people. Okay. I love that sound. It is nice. We are now moving on to another critical item that you want to do when you're maintaining or refreshing your S54, and that is a valve lash adjustment to make sure that your valves are within spec. So in order to do that, you're going to need some tools. And once again, Ian for Bray Krause, thank you so much for sending us all this stuff. Check it out. He actually sent us the whole BMW shim stack here, a ton of shims for the, the valves. And I'll get into one. I'm sure we'll find one that isn't within spec and we'll show you how to, it's done. But to check them, what you want to do is make sure you line up your cam lobes that they're facing upwards and then you're gonna to need to grab a feeler gauge. The spec on these is between um, seven and nine thou. So we're gonna start off with right in the middle, eight thou, and see what happens. And, oh wow, it slides in good on this side. Let's see if nine thou goes. And see, nine does not wanna go. So I'm gonna go down one to seven thou and see how that feels, but I think still a little bit of resistance there. So that side is good. Let's move on to the other side where eight's pretty tight. Let's see what nine looks like. This is kind of the longest part is going back and forth and trying to keep track of where you've left all your little feeler gauges. Nine, oh, I Got it under there, see, but it's, so nine is in there, but it doesn't move. Mm -hmm. It's a ton of resistance, so I think we're right at the spec point. Let's see if 10 will go. No, 10 does not fit at all. So again, we're good there, so let's move on. So I'm gonna rotate this. We should mention too, on the exhaust side, the specs are different. I think it's yes. about 11 to 13 thou. Yep, 11 to 13 thou, you're correct. And we did that side already and actually only replaced one shim. Go figure, the last one that we do is the one that is out of spec. It fits 10 thou. There you go, wow, look at that. And it happens to be the one that's hardest to get to and the hardest to see for you guys, but we're gonna show you anyways on it. So what you need to do is pull off this like retaining clip here that holds the rocker in place. And now with this tool, I should be able to slide it out just like that right off of it. Sometimes it gets jammed up, there it goes. So now it's out. Now I use the other side of the tool with the small little magnet and I slide it in there. And here you just kind of like rock it back and forth until it removes the shim. So 
we take the shim and we will quickly measure it. Let's see what we're dealing with here. So we're zeroed and it reads 2.25. All right, millimeters. So now we are going to reference our BMW box of shims here. So we were at 2.25, so let's say right here, and we need to go a little bit tighter. So we're gonna go to the next one up, which is 2.28. So this is like a, a quick little game. I reach for it, there it is. Just double check on it, it says 228. I take my little tool, put it back on, slide it back in place here. Just like that, it is in place. Actually, you know what? Just because I'm OCD, I'm gonna put the numbers face, facing downwards. <laughs> I don't know why, but I figure that's the best way to do it. All right, it's in place there. I'm gonna slide this over, back into place. There we go, rocker arm in. Put the locking retaining clip back in there. And that's it. So. Uh, I don't know if you're supposed to do this, but me and Dave have been doing it. We've been rotating it around just to double check it, put some pressure on it, and to see if that makes a difference. So we're coming around here, back up. vertical. And let's see if 0 0.10 fits in there. Nope, too tight. Let's go to 0.9. Come on, come on. Okay, there's nine thou, too tight. Let's see, eight thou. Come on, lucky Come number on, eight. Come on, lucky number eight. Ooh, eight's still tight, guys. We're gonna be either within spec or too tight now. So we've got one more to go here. Let me grab it. Lucky number seven. Come on, seven. Seven. Always come good. on. Seven's always a victor. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Seven fits like a champ. There you go, and there you have it. As you guys saw, we put the valve cover back on and reused that uh, gasket because B-Sun says we can. Apparently it's Viton, it can be reused, so it seemed to work fine for us. Putting it in a fresh set of uh, NGK Laser Platinums, or NGK R's. This is just a factory plug. Torquing them down to spec. Oh, she turned off on me. What's the spec, DP? Spec is 23 Newton meters. Oh, and I almost nailed it on the first try. Maybe I didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating. There we go. And before we officially call this a wrap, we'll show you a couple of more things here. You could call these the cherry on the cake of our refreshed S54. This is an oil filter lid, replacing the factory lid. And as you can see, it's got provisions on it for both a pressure sending unit and a temperature sending unit. These are for our AEM X-Series gauges. I'm not sure how we'll orient it. We'll probably orient it this way. She will sit on there. It's very nicely constructed out of billet aluminum. But they even put the torque spec on the top here, torque to 33 Newton meters. All in all, a very nice piece. And because we also want water temperature, we also got VAC Motorsports uh, water neck that is tapped for a sending unit. So they'll pop into this hole here. Pete's already removed this um, water hard pipe. She pops into there. We'll put a couple of O-rings on either end of that so that they seal with the uh, factory pipes that it mates up to. And I think that is the easiest way to put sensors on this engine. I did a bunch of research and it seems like that's the best way to go. So win-win, right? Yeah, it looks like a really slick system. I like it a lot. And what I like even more is the fact that I think we're done refreshing yes. this motor except the rod bearings. We still have some decisions to make on the rod bearings, but that'll come in a future episode. So that's it for today, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate all the support. Give us a thumbs up for all this groovy stuff that went on here, valve adjustments, 
Venus reinstalled. There's been a lot of action, and it's been a really interesting learning process for both of us. So don't be afraid to hit the, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button to see what we do with those rod bearings and to follow along with the rest of this drift build off. And of course, if you want some Speed Academy swag like this hat or Pete's sweet sweatshirt, check us out at speedacademy.shop.